Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Flood Escape 2 Community Maps is finally back in action, and we are here to try to break down the new timeline system and explain it as best as I can so you can understand how to make Flood Escape 2 maps. But before we go into Roblox Studio and mess with the new system, I want to see how it works in game. Um, so I have the new uh, Tony map loaded up here. That's right, Cyberpunk District. Uh, it was literally just released. Um, it literally has a flood news reference. Smash like if you understand that epic reference, but let's see how Cyberpunk District works. And is the load all scripts uh, uh, removed? Yeah, it is. Okay, let's go. No more scripts. There we go. Okay, rescue John. Who's John? I don't know. I don't. I just realized I don't have fe2.io on. That's okay. Okay. Um, I go this way. Oh no. Seems to be running fine. Seems to be working. Literally, the, literally the exact same. I kind of actually want to beat this map now. Okay. Run. This way. Yo. Oh my god. Okay. The lava is raising. That's a good sign. <laughs> this map is insane. Where do I go? Oh no. Down. Up. What? All the crab cake artwork for the for the advertisements really ties everything together. Am I supposed to go down? This looks like lava. Oh wait, no. The lava is a different color in this map. Okay. Oh no. Wait, it didn't kill me. I think that lava was supposed to kill me. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ooh. Go, go, go. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? What? Okay, so there's a spinning part there. That's a good sign. Things are things are happening. Here's the dub, here's the dub, let's go. Easy claps. Wow, this end room is uh, a, bit, a bit of a letdown, but you know what? We did it! Let's go Cyberpunk District, finally. Now, it's time to move on to Flood Escape 2. Wait, no. Roblox Studio, let's go. Here we are in Roblox Studio, and for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be using my old oil ocean map, and I'm gonna be porting it to the new timeline system. Um, this map is so old, it still uses event string. But it's pretty much the same as event script, so no need to worry. It's still going to work for every map. Every map! Okay, step one, we want to get the map making kit into our studio here. It's the same map making kit that you probably still have, but if not, it's linked in the description for you to download. And in the map making kit, there's the readme. We want to open that, and this is all the information that we need for our timeline system. This is pretty epic. We're going to go through all this and break it down, make sure you understand what all this means. And uh, <clears throat> step two, though, we want to get the plugin, which is made by Crazybox, the port FE2CM map. It's linked in the description as well. And with this plugin, you want to highlight your map model and click on the plugin. And that's going to add the timelines folder into your map. And it's also going to convert the lighting and rescue into a timeline. But if we open the timelines folder, we have the legacy trigger timelines, which is all the buttons converted into timelines automatically, which is very handy. And if we open this, we can see all the X frames up here fade. It also works with uh, fall sound and delay. So you don't need to worry about that. It does it all automatically, very handy. It's very handy for people who just want to uh, convert their map into the timeline system, not making a new map. They just want to recover their old maps of course, later on in the video, I'm going to show you how to make a button from scratch and how to use the timelines and X-frames to make objects appear, disappear, change color, or whatever. But for now, we're going to make our water... But for now, we're going to work on making our water move up in correlation to our event script here. So, to do that, if we look in our timelines folder, it has a template... It has a template for a timeline, basic timeline, and X-frame. And we're going to be building off this template here. Um, so step one in doing this, we want to set our uh, the X frame value to our water. 
because that's what we're gonna be using to move up with the x-frame yeah very epic okay so value water one and it doesn't matter what the timeline is called i'm just gonna call it water one so i can differentiate between the other timelines that we're gonna add in the video and x-frame i'm just gonna call it x-frame one because this is the first x-frame that's gonna be going on uh it doesn't matter what the name of the x-frame is either but okay so if we go to read me we're going to be working on the move part. This is what you need to do to make your water move up. So in the function here, we want to change it to move part. As you can see right here, move part. Um, step two, we can look down. So what we need to do. So vector three, this means we need to add a new attribute to our X frame. So if we go into here, it says boo or a vector three. We need a vector three one right there. Boom. And name it translation. Okay, and as you can see, it adds coordinates to our X-Frame. So if we go over to our event script, we see coordinates on our first line of code. Um, yeah, we're going to be converting this one line of code into this timeline right here, the X-Frame. So it says 46. Change this to 46. Bazinga. Okay, so we got that down. So now next we need to add a Boolean attribute. So go in here, Boolean, and name it use local space okay and we want to toggle that on all right next need to add a string attribute and call it easing style and uh, for our purposes we want it set to linear i'm assuming this is like the direction the water moves i'm not exactly sure what all the rest of this means but for our purposes and what the extent of my knowledge <laughs> Um, I'm setting it to linear, so I'm sure a more in-depth tutorial exists on YouTube. But if you guys want me to f figure all this stuff out, um, I'm sure I probably could and make a more in-depth tutorial. If you want that, like and subscribe and uh, comment. Um, but moving on, we need another string attribute and call it easing direction. Alright, and I'm going to set this one to out. Again, I don't know what the in and in out means, but uh, yeah, moving on. <laughs> For our weight and our uh, time it takes to move up, our weight is going to be set in the timestamp. So we want to change that to 45. And uh, the time it takes for the water to move up is right here, which is 10 seconds. Very awesome. All right, that is this line of code converted into the X frame here. And now we want to convert this line of code into a new X frame. So we, what we want to do is just duplicate this control D. I'm going to call this X frame two, not 12 there. And we already have everything set up. We just need to manipulate some of the information here. So instead of 46, we have a hundred instead of 25, we have uh, or instead of 10, we have 25. And then for our wait time, we need to add the two together because that's how this new system works. So 30 plus 45 is 75. All right. And that's that. That's how we move our water up in accordance to our event script. But uh, before we test it in game, I want to uh, quickly go over the set water state. This is not necessary for my map, but I'm going to do it to show you guys how to do it. So I'm just going to... Control D this. I want to change the lava to water at the same time it moves up initially. So I'm just going to name this X frame 1.5. Yeah. And then, so for our set water state, we need to change this to set water state. All right. Uh, make sure our value is set to water 1 still. Yep, we're good. And we need to delete all the stuff that we don't need. This was all for move part. Now we're doing something different. So get rid of all these attributes. Okay. And also the length um, is not necessary for set water states. But for our timestamp, we're going to leave it the same because we want it to happen at the same time the water moves up, if that makes sense. So let's see what attributes we need to add to the set water state. We need to add a string value called state. And we have options, water, acid, or lava. And in our case, we want water. 
and we need to add a boolean. Okay, so these last two are optional. Um, don't change color and specified color. I'm just gonna quickly go over how to change or how to add those. We, we need a boolean and don't change color. This is pretty self-explanatory. Toggle this if you don't want it to change color. We're chilling. Color three. Boom. Call it specified color. Okay. And uh, we want it to change to the blue blue color because you know water's blue. All right. So now our uh, map should be set up for the lava to move and change to water. So let me just save to Roblox real quick and test it in map test let's go so let's see if our map or let's see if buttons work pipe should appear boom baby let's freaking go the plugin works wonders it's li it's literally magic boom platform should appear platform should appear let's freaking go okay now we wait for the water to rise. And in the meantime, let's do the thug shaker. Do the thug shaker. Do the thug shaker. They're crushing. They're crushing. I can't even type, bro. The thug shaker. Here we go. Let's go, dude. It changed to water, correct? Yes. And it changed color to blue. Let's freaking go. Okay, that worked. Now to uh, make buttons. I'm going to make a new button and have it do stuff with the X frames. So let's go back to studio. Time to make a new button from scratch. So let's just get a button here. Move it over here. Call this button eight. Cause this is our eighth button. And what we need a part for this button to manipulate. So let's just throw a part in game here. Part, anchor this. Bazinga. All right, so what we want to do is make this part appear when this button is pressed. So to do that, let's take a look at our timelines. Let me get rid of this. <laughs> As you can see here, all of our buttons are its own separate timeline, which means we can have more than one timeline in our map. So we need to make a new timeline for a button. I'm just going to call it button eight. Again, it doesn't matter what the timeline is called. This is just for convenience sake and we need an X frame. And since I'm making the platform up here, I'm going to just call this up here for convenience and get rid of everything that we don't need. Okay. And make sure our value is set to our part. And now we are ready to start making this X frame. Uh, make this part up here. Okay, but before we do that, we want to make sure our timeline is set properly. So. We have a couple options here. For our sake, we want the trigger button, which means since this is the eighth button, we want to set this at eight. So when this button is pressed, this X frame will happen. We also have a couple options, trigger delay. Um, we can have it, uh, the timeline activate after a certain amount of seconds, but this is not necessary for our sake. Trigger timeline, we can have this timeline activate after a, a separate timeline is finished and then repeat on completion. You can toggle that if you want the timeline to repeat, but we do not need that right now. So let's go back to, wow, why did I click everything? Bruh, I'm lost now, hold on. So now let's go back to our X frame and start manipulating this to our liking. So if we take a look here, we're gonna do set properties, okay? We can also do tween sound shake camera alert, but I don't necessarily know how to do tween. And these three, I don't really need to go through. They're pretty simple. But if you want me to do a more advanced tutorial and go through everything, smash like, subscribe, and share, and comment. But for now, we're going through set properties. We're doing the basics here. Um, let's actually change the time to zero because we don't want to sit around and wait forever. And if we read this, we need a property underscore property name here, and then custom supports all attribute data types. Ensure target data type matches. Okay, so. In our case, we need an attribute that manipulates the transparency of the part and the, can collide. Okay, so we need to, let's do transparency first. It says to set the name to property underscore property name here, which is transparency. Okay, 
And for transparency, we need a number, I believe. Okay, set that to zero because that's how the part is going to appear. And now we need to make an attribute for the can collide property of the part. So let's do Boolean and call it property underscore can collide. Okay, and toggle this on so that the part is able to be walked on. And if we take a look at our properties here, this is what we're manipulating, the transparency and the can collide. I mean, um, there's also other properties that you can manipulate, the brick color, color, material, you can do all that with, uh, with the X frames. Um, for instance, if we wanted to change the color of the brick, we go color three, call it property underscore color. And then we could change the color of the brick when the color, when the button is pressed, but that's not necessary because the part's going to disappear. So that should be everything set. We make sure our value is set. Actually, do I have the value set to the part? Let me make sure that is correct. Yep, I do. Okay. I'm just going to name the part test part. So we know for sure. Um, let's go back to the X frame. Yep. Okay. Value set correct correctly. Um, timeline is set correctly. It triggers on button eight. We need to make sure this is invisible to the player. So it actually does appear. Okay. Oh yeah. One more thing I forgot to do. Wow. There's so many complicated steps to this. We need to change the function to set properties. Unbelievable. I can't believe I forgot that. Bro. Okay. Don't, don't, don't forget the function. Okay. Now let's test it in game. <laughs> Okay, so here's our new button that we made. A platform should appear. Let's go! We did it! We can walk on it. Okay, there we go. It's actually, the X-Frames and Timeline system is actually pretty simple. Once you figure out how to do everything, you can pretty much do everything. <laughs> Mama! Okay, subscribe, like, and, and share with your friends if you want me to go more in depth and make a more advanced tutorial, but there's the basics. Now, now I'm gonna go away now. Subscribe, like, ah. Uh...